Ah, peace be still. Hello, brilliant ones. The war is over. I was supposed to say that at the beginning, but I'm not going back. This is James, and we're continuing talking about uh, respect sex, proper sex, um, simple guidelines. So we're going to continue where we left off. Uh, we're talking about before marriage, so don't do it. <laughs> yes, it's that obvious. Don't do it. L uh, last time we talked about, uh, we're talking about preservation, protection, and purity. Preservation, physically. Protection, mentally. Purity, spiritually. So today we're going to talk about protection, why you do not commit adultery, fornication, sexual immorality before marriage. Protection mentally for you, your current family, your future spouse, and your future family. For you first, first of all, um, you don't want to engage in sexual activity before marriage because it can affect you mentally. And you want to protect yourself mentally. Not doing it protect provides protection mentally. If you have uh, classwork, young ladies, young men, if you have classwork, high school, college, whatever, and you're um, engaged in a sexual relationship with somebody who is not your spouse, you are can you can actually tie yourself mentally and emotionally, mentally as mind, will, and emotions to this particular person. You can give them a particular input into your life that they don't need to have. If you get involved sexually with someone, you can it can affect you emotionally. Hey, sometimes people use sexual intercourse as a punishment for people. And you don't need to be dealing with that in your high school. You don't need to be trying to have sex with somebody and then they're like trying to withhold it from you and it causes dips and uh, dips and I mean, your, your emotions are going up and down. You don't need that. It affects you. Um, it can affect you mentally. And so not doing it prevents you from having to deal with that. You're going to high school, college, you don't have time to be wasting time with that. I mean, come on, life is good. You have dreams and aspirations and you don't need your mind to be affected emotionally because you're sexually involved with someone you don't need to be involved with. You don't, you don't need that. You don't need to be thinking about that. Uh, your two, let's continue. Protection mentally. Don't do it. Simple guidelines. Your current family. Yes, you engaging, someone engaging in sexual activity can affect their current family. For instance, if you get pregnant, young ladies, or the person you're fornicating with, young men, gets pregnant, that can affect the parents and the brothers and sisters. The parents are, the, you know, the, the, now the parents have mentally, now they have to think, okay, now they got a grandkid while they still have a kid. And so that means they have to, that, I mean, that's, that's mental stress that your parents don't need to be dealing with, and your brothers and sisters. I mean, hey, for instance, if you are engaged in sexual activity, let's say not even if a child's born or anything, if you get a disease, now your family mentally, their mind, will, and emotions have to be, are, you are bringing, you're affecting them. You're bringing them into your mind, will, and emotions because you're affecting them. You, you decide you're going to do this, and your little brother now has to put up with the fact that you decide you're going to do this. I mean, come on, if you end up with something, something happens, your grades go down, you have to drop out of school, have to quit college, have to start a job or something, because, or something bad happens, it affects your family. Your current family is still affected. Don't be fooled. It's not just you and them. Oh, it's just us. And it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Those are lies. It affects your family when you uh, do or don't. But, you know, if you don't do it, it affects them in a positive way. But if you do commit fornication and adultery, it can affect your family emotionally and mentally. And now your father's like, where father could be like, where is he at? Where is he at? Oh, he's, he's committing fornication all over the place. Mom, staying up late, drinking tea, worrying people, you know, that you don't, don't, don't need to worry. We'll say she's staying up late, praying in tongues for you. You know, she's, she's interceding for you. The church is concerned. Why we have these uh, little uh, um, uh, unwed mothers? Why do we have these, uh, you know, f <laughs> these babies without fathers? Now the youth group. <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. It affects your family, current family. Just you think about it for a second. It does affect. You can protect yourself, your future. Your you can protect your current family mentally by not engaging in activity. It does affect other people. Um, three. Uh, protect your protection mentally for your future spouse. Your future spouse does not need to have to deal with the emotional anxiety or effect or emotional, well, yeah, the emotional anxiety or effect of you having to write 15 Christmas cards to all your children that you've had outside a wedlock. So now you're married with her, but now you got 
all these Christmas cards you have to send out. And then, of course, it affects her mentally and emotionally, or him. Dudes are to be a her, girls are to be a him, but either way, it affects them emotionally. If you have to, let's see, your kids are coming in every other week from that, that you've had, and they have other parents, and so now your time with your spouse on the weekend is now being changed because someone else is coming in, or you know, when it comes to holidays, now they're traveling around, or their kids have to go somewhere. You know, just think about it. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> if you think about that, that's a lot of things that they have to deal with now because you you could you fornication or you know you got someone you weren't supposed to be around and you fornicate and they're they're like harassing you. They're calling you all the time. They're blowing up your social profile. So your spouse doesn't need to have to deal with that. And you know, um, that's it. I mean, your your future spouse. You can protect your future spouse from having to put up with that. Extra people out. So you got your own set of kids. You know, but then you got extra people outside. You do not need your spouse to have to put up with that. That is um, not good. It's not a blessing to them. So you can protect your future spouse mentally by not engaging in sexual activity. Even, I mean, yeah. Four, you can protect your future family by not engaging in sexual activity mentally. Protection mentally. You can do protect them mentally because it's in... Um, just like I said, the future spouse, your children, you don't don't you do not need to have your children have to put it with, you know, emotional anxiety uh, and problems and all this stuff, you know, because now you got kids outside of wedlock, and you you finally get married, you finally have children. Your children don't have to put should not have to put up with that. And if you're fornicating outside, that will affect your children uh, mentally too, because. If you're fornicating and you have a kid and you don't stop and they grow up watching you fornicate and commit adultery, that affect that affects the children. Hey, don't be don't be don't don't be deceived. Just because children uh, are quiet and seem to adjust, seem to cope, children aren't coping with what you're doing that's wrong. They're just quiet because children just aren't adults and so they don't just tell you what they think. So children will just sit there, but you can affect your child emotionally because you're fornicating or you know someone, hey, it's, it's true. Children aren't blessed by it and you can protect your children by not doing that and them having to deal with stepbrothers and sisters and them have to deal with all the, you know, all the logistics and stuff. It's not good. It's not a blessing. You can protect your future family by that. And it's, it's important. Your future nieces and nephews, you can, yeah, hey, you're going to, oh, <laughs> your future, your, your future uh, father and mother-in-law, because when you go visit their house and you got eight kids from previous, you know, sexual encounters, hello, or, or even if, you know, you know, you didn't do what you're supposed to do and you just, you don't have any children. But then you're, the, you, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad when you think about it, but you know, you don't have any kids, but let's say that affects your career. You know, you don't get the promotions you were supposed to get because you were fornicating, committing adultery, you know, law, sin, and death was working. And that's another, that's another video, but you know, you got that, you know, mental fatigue, you're stressed out. So you go to grandma's house, stressed out. Not your grandma's like, you know, the future father-in-law, your grandkid, your, your kids, grandparents are like, well, why are you all stressed out from this? Well, you know, you were fornicating when you were younger and now you got all this emotional baggage. So you carry that to Christmas dinner. <laughs> so that emotional baggage spreads out to your spouse, your kids. So don't do it. It is very, very important. Respect sex. Proper sex is a wonderful, beautiful thing. And simple guidelines before sex, just don't do it. And that's it. And remember, Jesus is your healer. He's your financier and your righteousness. God is great. It's a wonderful day. It's a wonderful day to be alive. Praise the Lord. Woo! And I love you. Just believe you receive what I said about Jesus. And you'll enjoy it. Anything. And I love you. Be blessed. Bye.